So there's various estimates of global temperature going back basically like 500 million years. So you may have seen a graph like this. This is um, one that comes from Wikipedia where they kind of slight, spliced a bunch of uh, different records of temperature uh, together. And they come from different lines of evidence. A lot of it is drilling at the bottom of the uh, ocean floor and uh, looking at the fraction of Delta O18 uh, in the calcium carbonate shells. And that has a, uh, it has a correlation with temperature. Uh, and so that's you know one of the ways that they can kind of reconstruct or give give the best estimate for how temperature um, has evolved on Earth going back in time. Uh, so I've taken a number of these records and put them together, and so that I could kind of plot them together without doing the skewed uh, axis thing. So let's kind of take you through that. So this is the modern global temperature record going back to 1950 where we have these um, you know, ups and downs every year, which mostly have to do with El Ninos and La Ninas. And so we've seen that we've warmed a little over a degree Celsius since that time. And this is global temperature relative to a pre-industrial uh, period. So that these are the Paris uh, target. So we are rapidly approaching the 1.5 uh, target where the goal would be to stay below 1.5 uh, by 2100. Uh, and then the two target is, is up there. So zooming out a little bit more, this is uh, back to 1900. We can see the same wiggles. This more or less encompass, encompasses the uh, instrumental climate record. So when we have actually had uh, instruments on the surface of the planet, thermometers on the surface of the planet measuring uh, the global average temperature. So then zooming out further, um, we lose our we lose our high time resolution going back further because this is now evidence put together from like tree rings and pollen cores and lake cores and things like that. So we we lose that resolution, but presumably there presumably there was still you know ups and downs every year uh, going back. This is to uh, 1700, and then we can really start to see going back to the year 1500. You know, kind of how we were in more or less, we think a pretty stable uh, climate and then post-industrialization in this time period and then you know really global industrialization kind of post-1950. Uh, that's when temperatures are really starting to be driven up. <clears throat> uh, this is back to the year 500. And so now you can really see kind of the how steep this uh, recent time period is compared to um, compared to what was happening over hundreds of years uh, previous to that. And then we can put on here kind of estimates of temperature going to 2100. And so this would be like a high emission scenario. And this would be kind of a more of a medium emission scenario where you're still not meeting the Paris goal, but you're overshooting it a little bit. Um, so kind of putting both of those on there. And then it's interesting to kind of imagine, okay, let's say we, um, you know, post 2100, we basically stop emitting greenhouse gases, uh, essentially because they've become too difficult to uh, extract. There's definitely more greenhouse gas or there's more fossil fuels um, that we could get and warm the planet more. Uh, but if we, if we were to stop emitting greenhouse gases, uh, in 2100, under these two scenarios. Uh, think about this. How long do you think temperatures would stay elevated? So I'm going to extend this graph and we're going to see what temperatures, what we think temperatures would do based on our best kind of modeling. And we are very evenly distributed. So we have uh, B winds, the year 2500. And so I guess it, you know, kind of depends on uh, how exactly you interpret this, but let's let's take a look at what we think uh, will happen. So this is this is again just um, this is climate models and uh, models that are trying to simulate the entire uh, carbon cycle and you know keep track of where where the CO two would go. So this is out to the year twenty two hundred. We don't typically see these types of graphs. We usually see things end in 2100 for some reason. But so even if we stopped emitting um, 
CO2, this is like kind of a gradual decline, or it started, it started falling in 2100. You still get temperatures rising for a period of time until you're at zero emissions. And then we're out into um, 2300, and we're still elevated, still very much um, not really coming down. 2400, 2500. So this is where the kind of irreversible language uh, comes in. So not it's not irreversible on like billion year time scales, but it's irreversible on the time scales we care about. So this is 3000, year 3000, 4000, 5000, 10,000. So we get this, you know, gradual temperatures coming back down. Um, but it's it's this this is the nature of CO2 that it was sequestered underground and we put it in the ocean atmosphere biosphere system. It's just there. It's it it's not going to be easy to take that out and to put it back. I mean, it's not it's not the case that the biosphere is going to be able to turn that back into fossil fuels quickly, right? So if we are able to pull it out, if we're able to suck it out and pump it into geological reservoirs then we could get this temperature to come back down you know, very quickly. But as long as it's just now part of the ocean atmosphere biosphere system, then it's going to be um, enhanced in the atmosphere for a long period of time. Yeah, we and just turned is, off the faucet. We're not draining the tub. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but there is, there is, you know, some tub drain and it's basically, the, you know, the ocean is going to be um, sequestering some of that CO2 over time. And so there is this long kind of, you know, half-life like uh, drawdown, but it's elevated for a long period of time. And so then we can look at this kind of compared to climate changes in the past. So this is now 10,000 years in the past, 10,000 years, or it's basically 12,000 years in the past, 8,000 years in the future. And then this is uh, 20,000 years in the past. So now we've revealed here the, this is the last ice age, um, essentially how cold it was at a period of time when there were massive ice sheets over um, North America and Siberia. Uh, so pretty much all of Canada was, was an ice sheet at this time. Uh, and so we can see that this was like, um, say, you know, about four, like, these, these numbers are very rough and there's a bunch of different estimates for, for how much uh, cooling there was during the last glacial maximum. But say it's about three degrees um, below industrial levels here. You know, we're talking about just as much warming on this side. But again, look at how steep this is compared to this. So it's about 10 times faster warming in this direction than this direction, even though the magnitude is about um, the same in terms of what we're talking about uh, for uh, future climate change. So going back further, this is uh, 20,000 uh, 20, uh, years ago. So this is the last interglacial period. This is called the Eemian. Um, this may actually be more like this. We think that uh, it was warmer than today during this time period. But this might be the last kind of analog for um, the climate that we're expecting in the near future. And these, so these cycles are kind of interesting. And this kind of, again, goes to the, goes to the notion of like um, the earth just kind of responding to physical laws uh, rather than being in perpetual balance that we kind of have some chaos in here. Um, of this, these cycles between ice ages and interglacials. And they do bring that up in the book um, that they talk about that uh, Arunius, Arunius um, was very interested in these ice age cycles and did cooling and warming and cooling and warming. And um, they had geological evidence of this. And so he was mostly interested in CO2 to, to explain that. And it does turn out after all these years that uh, CO2 does um, play a pretty big role in these cycles. 
but they are um, primarily driven by changes in the Earth's orbit around the sun. So the Earth getting different levels of radiation uh, during different times of the year. And then CO2 kind of acts as a positive feedback to enhance that and cause um, global changes in temperature. So we may come back to that uh, later in the semester. But here's zooming back out to uh, 800,000 years in the past. So we're talking about warming that's, um, you know, above anything 800,000 years in the past. This is now 5 million years going back in time. This is 30 million years. And this is 65, 60 million years ago. Uh, so this level of warming is, you know, not unprecedented in Earth history. Um, and so that's just, again, it's, it's to say that it's not really the absolute temperature that we're so worried about. It's, it's the rate of warming. It's how fast, in, it's the amount of warming in such a short period of time. So during this period of time, there were no uh, ice sheets on Earth at all. So there's no uh, Greenland ice sheet, there's no Antarctic ice sheet, there's evidence of kind of tropical-like um, ecosystems on Antarctica uh, during this time period. Um, and so the Earth is fine with that temperature given enough time. It's more that if you don't give it enough time, then you're in big trouble. Okay, and then this is this is all the way out like our kind of largest estimates uh, into the past. Okay, so let's zoom back in. And um, I kind of want to just point out some, uh, some kind of milestones in terms of the evolution of humanity and society put on this uh, time scale to give us kind of a better sense of these large uh, numbers in terms of uh, how much time has passed. So going back in, we can kind of plot on here. So this is, again, 3 million years in the past. Um, we can plot on here uh, when humans first started walking upright. So that was about 7 million years ago. And we can, I'm going to put these numbers also in terms of human generations, which uh, is just a rough number you can kind of divide by uh, 25, uh, right? Because on average, humans reproduce kind of when they're 25 years old. Uh, and probably that was not the case with these uh, first upright walking animals, but uh, just a rough estimate. So 280,000 human generations ago are when our ancestors first started walking upright. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of generations ago. So the point, the point I'm continuously trying to make here is that like five generations into the future may seem like ridiculously large, but it's really, it's really not when you think about the past. So other uh, milestones, um, we were making tool, our ancestors were making tools 2.5 million years ago or about 100,000 human generations ago. Uh, we had the first, our ancestors were first the size of modern humans, roughly 1.9 million years ago or 76,000 human generations ago. Uh, we have evidence of our ancestors making fire 1 million years ago, so 40,000 uh, human generations ago. And notice our ancestors were able to withstand these um, kind of turbulent times in terms of climate that we had uh, these ice ages come and go uh, many times. Um, 700,000 years ago, we have evidence of, uh, of shelters and spears to hunt animals. So it's 28,000 human generations ago. Uh, 16,000 human generations ago are when um, we ha first have evidence of uh, our ancestors or our split ancestors, the Neanderthals, uh, burying their dead. So kind of showing a culture. Uh, Homo sapiens sapiens. So our actual species uh, emerges about 8,000 human generations ago. So been about 8,000 human generations uh, of human humans. Uh, so that's 200,000 years. 
And then 120,000 years ago, humans, the first um, humans leave Africa and start colonizing the rest of uh, the earth. So that's 4,800 human generations ago. And then 1,400 human generations ago, still a lot of generations, uh, we have you know, some real solid evidence of culture in terms of uh, cave paintings, so art, um, which I think is interesting. And then zooming in further, and then this, um, so I'm, I'm pulling this from uh, this book called A Street Through Time. And so this is, uh, it's, this is the type of book that you would get like in the lobby of a museum. It's actually made by the Smithsonian uh, Museum. And so it's, you know, it's like kind of a book for kids, but I still think it's, it's like a great illustration of um, just kind of humanity. So what they do is they just take um, like one scene and it's obviously, there's a lot of artistic license taken, um, but they just kind of step through one scene um, on earth that they say is a street and look at, you know, all of these different time periods. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's kind of Eurocentric. I think it's, if I had to guess, I would say it's a place probably in Germany. Um, and so there's obviously kind of other things going on in different parts of the world. But I, I think it's interesting to kind of put this stuff uh, on this timeline as well. Uh, and I will, I will note that they have uh, PhD historian consultants on here. So I don't think it's just, you know, made up by this, uh, by this artist. But uh, so this is, this, is a, this is how the scene starts, uh, 10,000 BCE. Um, so that's 485 human generations ago. And uh, it's hard to see here, but this is kind of, this is hunter gatherer uh, society in, in Europe at that time. And, you know, they had these, you know, animal uh, hide tents and they had, you know, here's someone making a canoe and they, you know, dogs were starting to be domesticated and you have someone um, curing meat and uh, you have religion. Um, so, you know, this is the type of thing that like, this is 10,000 BCE, 485, human generations ago, you can kind of picture yourself living in this society, you know? Um, so it's not just it's not some different species. Uh, and then we have kind of farming developing. This is 2000 BCE, so kind of more sophisticated uh, huts and, and uh, town developing, but you have a blacksmith and you have people sewing, you got a hunter here, you have um, some, you know, domestication of, of animals, um, fisher people, uh, and yeah, so we have more, um, looks like sheep out here, so, you know, we're starting to use uh, animals for food and for warmth and, and um, in a systematic way, in a, in a agricultural way. Here's uh, Iron Age, so 105 human generations ago, you kind of get the idea where um, getting more sophisticated with our buildings, uh, Roman times, uh, 100 uh, CE, so the year 100. Uh, obviously, when you look at like the Colosseum and things like that, you have you know very sophisticated infrastructure. We got we have big boats at this time. Um, a lot of a lot of things going on. We have you know indoor toilets and uh, they have the aqueducts and and everything. So. Uh, that's 75 human generations ago. Uh, so, you know, thinking about 75 human generations into the future shouldn't be so abstract now. And we wouldn't be very happy with people 75, you know, human generations in the past if they had uh, done something that drastically hurt our, you know, way of life. Uh, so this is, I'll just kind of go through this fast that uh, then kind of back to a medieval village. So you had the fall of Rome and then back, back to medieval times, 32 human generations ago, 13 human generations ago, we have the 1700s. Um, so again, you know, it's 400, 400 years ago, um, we're 400 years downstream of their decisions. There will be people 400 years downstream of our decisions. And then here's our um, street 
today, zero human generations ago.